Father, your word is already blessed. Your word is already ordained. Your word will reap where it's so not. I pray, Father, that as you share your word, God, I pray that the preacher or the teacher come forth, that you may get the glory and the honor. These favors we ask you know the name, but in Jesus' name I pray. Let God's people say, Amen. Amen. It's so good to see all of you out today. Thank God for such a privilege and that we can come together one more time around the table. Amen. On the platform to share the word of God and also to commemorate his suffering. Get used to communion on earth because Jesus told the disciples, I will no longer do this with you until you come with me in my Father's kingdom. So in the kingdom of heaven, when Jesus come to take us to where the place he had prepared for us, we're going to have communion. Ain't that something? Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Because the bridegroom is going to come and take his bride out of this church, out of all the churches around the world. Do I have a witness in the house? We have a topic for this month of July. June was the topic of relationship, how to better relationship with our children. And today we are going, in the 1st of July, we are going into another area called better relationship with my spouse. Now, this is a touchy, touchy one. Very touchy. And uh, even when I was, I said, Lord, and I look at the schedule, and from January, no one had chosen to share on this topic. <laughs> so that tells me that we all need a better relationship <laughs> with our spouse. Do I have a witness? Is there anyone in the house can say, look, me and my spouse, my spouse and I, we are so to the point until if it get any better, I might well leave and go to heaven. I'm ready to sit down so you can preach. <laughs> Great God from Zion. But we better come to the altar and pray. But as we journey on this life, it's amazing, the Lord had dropped something in my spirit this morning in reference with navigating. And I was trying to ponder it, I was pondering in my mind, I said, Lord, navigating, how was it that everything in this world, there is a manual, books upon books, that you can get what to learn. If you're interested in being a doctor or a nurse, a pilot or a captain, you can go to school for that. And then whatever they teach, then we have to accept it. But when it comes to the word of God, the best we can do is follow the Holy Spirit. Because the word is life. The word is spirit and it is life. That's why it seems to be so 
complicated sometimes to understand the word. And if anyone in the world besides Solomon and then Christ can say, I know all about the world, then you need to go ahead and let's have a great revival. Amen. And I thought this morning that in sharing how to better relation, how to better ourselves with our spouse, I think when I went to school, myself, but a Pike and LJ, to navigate, I always put the cart before the horse. What do you mean, Knowles? Every piece of equipment I purchase, I purchase it, then learn how to operate it. When I bought a barco, I had to ask Brother Hartley, who had the experience, to go to the harbor with me to take the barco and put it on the low boy. Then I bought a low boy and the tractor head, but a Simo will understand what I'm talking. That's those tanks that pull on the road, you know, the, the, the big containers. I bought one, then learned how to drive it. Is that smart? Then I went to, on top of that, I bought a 52 foot boat yacht, and then I go to school to learn how to navigate it. Is that smart? Then I all, then on top of that, I get married, then learn how to live with a spouse. <laughs> you laughing at me? Which one of you was ready to take on a spouse? Stand up here, let me see. And let's shame the devil. So you shouldn't be laughing at me. But in order to learn, we have to go back to the manual. Am I right? For some reason, the manual seems to be so boring until many take it and say, that's not going to work. And even up till today, many are saying that it's not going to work. If I want to ask a young couple who was married for two years, how is things going? They will say, man, Pastor Rebel, but an old so Linward, man, things are so good. Oh, man. Then being experienced, then I will ask him in which area? In all the areas, in all the categories? Because what happened, the excitement, the enthusiasm, and to the young people, follow us close. You should not miss a Sunday this coming week, I mean this coming month. Because you're going to hear some experience and then you look at the word that it will help you to avoid some pitfalls. Are you hearing me? Because my marriage and Leroy's marriage, we're on the same foundation, but our house will look a little different. Are you hearing me? So what I'm sharing with you, don't take it to the pastor and all say, do this. No, it will not fit. Because your dress and my coat, if I give this to Brother Pike, he, he will suffocate trying to get into it. <laughs> Am I right? That young couple will be so excited because the enthusiasm of the engagement, just to talk on the phone, just to hear the voice, 
It runs a thrill through the spine. Do I have a witness in the house? Sister Nose used to live in Abaco and I used to live in Grand Maham and we used to talk. And the phone bill didn't mean nothing. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Am I right, Brother Pike? <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. But after a couple of years, that phone bill means something. <laughs> Are oh, you laughing? Uh, see, they can laugh now because they know what I'm talking about. You young folks, you listen good. Listen good. And between three to 10 years, if you ask them, that same couple, how they're doing it, we they'll say, we're good. <laughs> we're making it. What happened? It haven't been 10 years yet. And if you ask the one from 18 to 30 to 40 plus, say, child, we're making it by the grace of God. <laughs> I can sit down now. It's the truth. What happened? There's a couple I married, and uh, when I heard they were getting divorced, and all those couple I marry, and you get divorced, I come out for my money. It wastes my time. I can start charging for, for marriage now. Because Brother Pike, as long as you stay married, you're scot free. And I charge you for every year. Amen. And he, the, the excuse was didn't tell me, I told a friend. So, well, we got a divorce because I did not have the right counseling. And I heard one of the doctors from Nassau said, who's a biblical doctor, he said, he do not marry any couple out of his church unless they attend for a year and a half of counseling. Now, one can say, I ain't going to do that torture. But if you're going to be an engineer, you're going to go to school for four years, wouldn't you? If you're going to be a minister, wouldn't you go to Bible school for four years? When we went to Bible school, sometimes you take the, you want to take the book and throw it out the professor. One of my Bible college brother said, he said, Brother Knowles, he said, doctor, see me straight through. That means every assignment he did, he got a C. <laughs> so in four years, she see him straight through when he was graduated. But when it comes to marriage, then we don't think we need any counseling. As I thought, sister, sister knows she could open up a school. Because we think that we know everything. How is it that we think we know everything when we're going into marriage, but when we go into a profession, we got to go to school? 
We prepared our mind to go to school, to be a preacher, to be a teacher, to be a carpenter, to be a pilot, to be, a, to be whatever. But when it comes to marriage, we dump ourselves in it. The reason why there's so many divorced now, because we get married and we don't know what in the world we were doing. And when the, when the, when the, when the only one to hear the preacher say, I pronounce you husband and wife, and you are on a mountaintop, and you don't know how you get there. But when you look down, there's such a valley, and you start sliding, and you couldn't stop. What preaching could he? Hosea said, 4 and 6, he said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So why would we want to plunge into marriage and fist fight, kick each other, Try to fight upon each other, trying to find, you know what we're doing? We're trying to find our way. We really refuse to jump on a boat. And I said to you, I said, okay, let's go to Moore's Island. You will assume I can find Moore's Island, wouldn't you? And once we get out of, and we sing Grand Bahama, then I can tell everybody on board, I know where I am. <laughs> Can't read the compass, don't know how to plug in the GPS, and now what happened? We are lost. Because we refuse to hear the instructions. Everything in life, God has already given and had men pass through, women pass through these areas so they will be able to tell you and I. So our lives could be better. Am I right? Let me say this while I come. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I tip my heart to you, brothers in FNC. I tip my heart to you. In spite of the non-professional training, I must say, we're doing pretty good. Would you say, Pike? What do you mean pretty good, Pastor Nose? To hold the marriage born together. And I want to share with you why it's important to hold it together. Because Malachi 2 and 16 said, for, God, for the Lord God of Israel says that he hate divorce. Find it. He hates divorce. For it covers one garment with violence. We try to find a way how to have a better relationship with our spouse. Some of us come to church smiling. But boy, you just had words leaving home. Even in the car. But when you step in, I believe something got a hold of you. I believe that. As we navigate ourselves through a marriage, it is good that we do some dead reckoning sometimes. What was we talking about? Oh yeah, that's only a, 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 a term for maritime captains. It's an old maritime terms to describe navigating by knowing the initial position, the craft, speed, direction, and how long the distance has been maintained. Watch this now. To determine the craft new 
position. I believe every few months, Brother Pike, I believe we should do some dead reckoning. What are you talking about? If I decide to go and take you to West Palm Beach, and the compass, according to the chart, the chart said, I want you to travel 270 miles degrees west or northwest. So what I'll do, I'll go on the boat and I'll plot 270 miles and I'll keep that compass on 270 miles degrees northwest. But the problem with that, if I maintain that course and I maintain that speed, I will never hit West Palm Beach. Am I right, Captain? So what the captain got to do? He got to do some dead reckoning. So that my compass is at 270 degrees. And what happened? The gulf, the wind and the tide is pushing the boat sideways off course. So the boat bow heading for West Palm Beach. But the whole boat itself is off course way over and we might end up in Jupiter somewhere. What do you say, Nose? Some of us think because we're miles so long, we're on course. If you do a dead reckoning to recognize this is where I am, how far I was traveling. And when you do a GPS global, what global positioning system, when you look, you're miles away from off the course. So what you got to do? You got to correct your course. So sometimes I'm saying I'm doing good to my spouse. But how long, how, when last did I did a day at reckoning, sit down and talk? Real talk. What's on your mind? What last you said about Charlie? <laughs> Don't say it. Not because the spouse is smiling. Means you're on course. Hello, somebody. And because we as men, oh Lord, look ahead. Well, the Bible say, minus the head. But well, we can get there. You are the head because God placed the responsibility on us. Do you know? Oh Lord, let's, we better go to the word. Do you know it is your responsibility and mine to keep the marriage intact? And every now and then it's good for us to go back to review the vows in which we took. Who could remember them? There are some couples that have to get a marrying. And every time they see for better, for worse, they say, no, no, I want a word. <laughs> so what I have to do now, rather than saying for better, for worse, I say life challenges. What's the difference? <laughs> it just sounds good. But life challenges could be for better, for worse. Are you hearing me? And every now and then, it's good to reflect back what the preacher asked. Watch this now. Let me refresh your memory. Lord, look where I am. All excited. Step it down the aisle. 
If you're 18, 19 to 25, that means you're carrying 25 years of your family bondage. To me, they're not a farm, not a person who have their family bondage. So bondage plus bondage is bondage. Then me as a preacher gonna stand up and say, Delhi beloved. We're gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to get to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. In holy matrimony. I can jump ahead here. Which is commanded by St. Paul to be honored among all men. And therefore, it is not to be entered into unadvisedly. That means no one should get married, just jump into it. That means you'll get in trouble. Unadvisedly is without consideration lack of forethought that means you, whenever you decide to take on a spouse that means there are a lot of thought have to go into it am i right oh i missed my time i know when i start a lot of thought have to go into it you should not go into it unadvisedly or lightly. That means, hey, it's nothing to it. But reverently, discreetly, advisedly, and in the fear of God. Then the preacher will say, into this holy estate, into this holy estate. What do you mean, holy estate? The holy estate is the divine, set apart, sacred event. No one should get married just to play with it. If you get married just to play with it, if you get married just to uh, just get married, sake, or get married just because of because, then it's going to be very, very difficult to find that common relationship between you and your spouse. Everybody keep looking at me. Watch this. Then it said, into this estate, these two now persons present come now to be joined. Then you have to ask publicly this by law, if any man know any reason, including woman, why any, why this man or this woman should not be married, speak now forever, shut your mouth or hold your peace. And as a marriage officer of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, it is my duty, though if I marry you and find out that you was married again, I am a marriage officer. I got to run you into the law. I have to arrest you. So you better don't tell me. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. I said, I'm, I'm a marriage officer. What do officer do? Oh. And if you come for me to marry you, and you have not got legally yet, divorce that means I still can run you in to the authorities that's all law that's all law and this is the part where it's so sacred the preacher will say 
That's why many do like go to the church. We will go to the just JP now and say, I do, I do, I do, I do, forget the rest. I want to say this to you, may shock your brains. Not every marriage God put together. The preacher will say, I require and charge you both as you shall answer at the dreadful day of judgment. Every marriage will be stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Because it is a divine institution. Marriage was a deed orchestrated, designed by Jehovah God. Not by man. Now they can change what they want to change and change the laws and children do that's up to man. But that doesn't mean God married them. You're married legally according to the estate. But according to heaven, heaven will say you're living an adulterous life. We can get there. Hang on. He said, when all secret and all hearts shall be disclosed, that if either of you know any impediment, impediment means a hindrance or an obstacle that we know or you know that you are not to join with that spouse. I know I ain't ready for this today. This is good. You asked me to, you said we want to know how to better relation, have a better relationship. In order to have a better relationship, we got to know what's wrong. When you go to the doctor, you, you go to the doctor, you tell the doctor, I sit. Doctor said, what's wrong with you? I sit. The only thing the doctor can do is feel the heart. Well, the heart is right. The pressure is right. What's wrong with you? I said. And then the doctor will do is call the psychiatrist. It's a comfort this one because this one is a little sick upstairs. I can't. I can't. I cannot. I cannot analyze that one. He's sick in the head upstairs. Watch this. Stick with me. For be well assured that if any persons are joined together otherwise than God would do allow, their marriage is null and void. Something I'm, I wonder if I was married. But those who are married, the way God has designed it to be married, I want to let you know, it was God's intent that in this marriage, the only thing that can move you away from your spouse Hallelujah. is death. But today, what do we do? We go before the, and God get married. And because I can't put up with you any longer, I go to an unjust judge who don't know God. And because of the land, the laws of the land give him authority yes. to do what God undo. But let me tell you something. No judge in this Bahamas or in the world can undo what God do. Bring me one. Watch this now. He may give you a bill of divorcement, but you may get a divorce in the Bahamas or in the land, but is it legal in heaven? What are you concerned about here or are we in, we're concerned about heaven? We are only here for a short time and after that short time is over, brother, you and I are going to see that great God. And we're going to stand before him. That's why. If you be offended. 
be reconciled. One thing with God, he don't play. What would he say? He mean what he say. If God destroyed this whole earth with water and saved seven, he'll do it again. He'll do it again without a blip, without a blink, without a feeling. Why? Because he is God. And when we go on the boss, we're going to see. There's only one stipulation I see in the word. That will legally in heaven give you a bill of divorcement. Hebrews 13 and 4 says, marriage is honorable, means worthy and being worthy to be lifted up and to be put on display. That means those of us are married, man, you ought to be put on display. He said, and the bed is undefiled, unstained, uncorrupt, clean. Brothers, as our, as our bed clean, as our bed on the file. Every time I, I get sister know, one thing with sister know with, with, with woman, let me say this early. One thing with woman, they are a carrier. Again, before I, I, I didn't suppose that today, but they are a carrier. And if you want to keep something, give it to your wife. So know how long we've married. Well, see there? I was thinking around 40-ish plus. <laughs> 42 years. And I want to stand before you. By the grace of God, within 42 years, we kept the marriage vow and kept the bed clean. And if you have not kept the bed clean go back to the father and ask god to forgive you because you defile the bed and that means if your spouse know she has a right to give you a bill of divorcement Help me, Jesus. When I come to the young people, they say they're going to get married, and they said, I ask them, Why you want to get married? We're in love. And they all love each other. You see, they also engage. You always tell people who engage right in the car. Thank God for buckle seat now. In the old days, you know, seat straight across by Russell. My God, there's a big, I mean, you don't know who for the gas. <laughs> they would say, I'm in love. Define love. I have a feeling for her, you're in trouble. When somebody tell you they're gonna marry you because they I have a feeling for you, you are in trouble. Your marriage will not last. Because as soon as that feeling change <laughs> and condition change feeling, when they had no money, the feeling it change. When there is no light on in the house, the feeling can change. When there's no drink in the, in the refrigerator, the feelings can change. <laughs> Lord, you're laughing. I better stick to the stick to the word there. Mm. You ask married people right now, tell them, give you two reasons, good reasons why you get married. They can't tell you. (laughs) 
Maybe we should have a, 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 a night to ourselves and, and share a, a secret say, why did you get married? I can tell you why I get married. This nose know, so put my God, but I saw this nose. I said, that's the one. <laughs> Track my attention is my eyes. <laughs> and your eyes are track attention to what you talking about. You know, you look at me like you're like <laughs> and I believe my former pastor, not Pastor Pretty, the Mc, uh, Bishop McKinney, he said to me, he said, Nodes, he said, the day you go to Abaco, he wanted to take me to Sandy Point. And I refused to go to Sandy Point. And when I did go to Sunday Point, thank God, I got poisoned with fish. So I couldn't go. By the time I, I get over it, my, his mama nursed me back to health. It was time for me to come back home. And I went to Abercombe. So an old cousin asked me to stand at a wedding. He's worked at Syntax together. And there were two things I used to love to do, stand in weddings and stand for, you know, Godfather as a ba for babies. Oh, I love that. Until I find out the real truth <laughs> and responsibility you have in standing for a baby. Are oh, you with me? And he said, I want you to, I, 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 I want you to go with me. I, I said, okay, man, sure, I can stand, I'll stand. When I saw this, now forget this brownish station wagon with all these ladies in the back. I knew Brother Trevor because he used to work the syntax. But he never talked about his sisters and never, you know, introduced me to them. But when I get there, huh, what all this? But mind you, I go on to stand in the bed, but I the time for rehearsal, I say, I want to stand with that one right there. <laughs> Not knowing that the audience had already, already lined this thing up. Or is somebody coming? And from then we was able to talk. Talk. And I went to Daddy Dell, a daddy named Del Gano. I went to the house. That's one thing. Young man, don't go to the window. Don't take no rock and throw at the window. If you mean her some good, ring the doorbell. Even if you get run, Ring the doorbell. <laughs> Go the honest way. Are, are you hearing me? And believe you me, Lord, look where I am today. When I went to Abaco, Mr. Delgano Newbull, anyone who knows Delgano Newbull, was one of the roughest and the toughest father in the area of Marsh Harbor or Dundas Town. And when I got there, they used to tell me, boy, he gonna run you. <laughs> boy, he get this to you. I said, well, if he run me, then I, get, I understand. I says, daughter, but I go on the right way. Are oh, you hearing me? And we sit down and we talk. We sit down and we talk. And we sit down and we talk. And we sit down and we talk. And mind you, before I got married, the sister knows I was, I was engaged to a preacher daughter. <laughs> no, 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 hold on. Listen. I said before. And the reason why, that's why you got to do your homework. 
I took a trip to Mexico. <laughs> and when I came back, I brought this cheap coat. And then I had an expensive leather coat. And when I brought it, I said, this is your gift. You know what she said? You went all the way to Mexico and bring me this cheap coat. Time to go home. I, so. I used to live on a 493, uh, uh, um, 163 Explorers Way. Myself in a three bedroom. I used to take care of it for, I took care of it for about 12, 10 years. It's no, when I get Masters knows we, um, LJ and probably Linnell born there. And that's what give me a boost in my finance. One day I went there, when I put up in the garage, I saw this person, what you doing here? What are you doing here? I got for you to take me home. I said, you should have been home. <laughs> you see what time it is? Hello, somebody. This is a preacher's daughter. If I call the name, you'll know. Take on the auntie in here today. But she commanded me afterwards. Lord, look where I am. I get here. I'm helping you. I'm helping you. And during that time, as a young youth leader, as the state youth leader for three churches, they used to look. They used to look up to me, and I know that, Brother Pike. So that means I had to live a life that is represented God. <laughs> Brother Granville, Deacon Elder Granville, he's on, I know he's on Zoom right now. And he would uh, allow me, I'm the only young man, he would allow to pick up his daughters from school and take them home. Gosh, I do. She's one of them. On Sharon Ellen and Nelly. They were smaller than Zion. And when I go to pick them up in this Volkswagen of mine, you had to hold your foot up. Because you should see the ground. And when they pass the road with the school kids walking home, Melly and Tashi used to sink in the seat. <laughs> That's why I love those people, those young people. They're my people. I know them. We grew up together. And concluding, I, you think I forgot. Let me, let me finish the story first. And because we had to go to services night after night. Oh, you think we have so look here when we were growing up sister virgin can tell you but a pike we used to have revival for three nights i mean three solid weeks without stopping without stopping every night monday night prayer meeting tuesday night women wednesday night midweek thursday night choir practice friday night ype youth and christian fellowship Saturday night sale that's why I hate sale what I got to do knows with relationship between spouse that's why I said family night is still Monday night 
Don't blame me FNC when you're not spending your time with your spouse. You can't say, well, the church dragged me out every night. That's not true. Speak the truth and shame the devil. And we had to go to a service and I had to do, do the conducting. And she said, let me press your shirt. I said, no, 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 my shirt. No, 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 my shirt. I said, no, 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 you're not going to press my shirt. It's my shirt. I said, if we get married, you have plenty of time to press, to press my shirt. And guess what? I heard a rap on the door. Pop, pop, pop. Who is there? Daddy. Hey, Brother Norris, how you doing? I'm good, so come in. She saw, he saw his daughter sitting down. He didn't say nothing. And the thing about it, said he carried daughter, he leave his daughter. <laughs> now on my way to work, on my way to church, I drop her off and I went to church, moderate. Next two days, daddy called me in. I went in, yes sir. Oh, the Bible said, don't let your God be evil spoken of. And oh, then he your old And he began to run, and he began to move, and he began to speak. And I said to him, I said, sir, see your daughter there. Ask her if I ever pick her up from where she work to take her to my house. Ask her if I ever call her to pick her up to take her home. She came there on her own. How she get there, I don't know. She break up running in the room. See all kind of red flag coming up. Next week I go on down there, I say, sir, just come to tell you our respect. And he loved me till the day he died. And you know what? And I'm so sorry that I didn't go. Did not, I thought he had time. He called, he wanted to talk with me. And I told his sister, I'll come, I'm going to come. But he died, he died before I got there. I should have gone. And up till today, her mama respected me. Young people, let me tell you something. When you are in God, let me tell you something. Either you mean God or come out. And I'm a son harsh. Don't play with this. Either mean it or out of it. And when I got married, I remembered it. At the Methodist Church, he said, Tell death, do us part, and forsaking all others. Keep thee unto, keep thee, or keep her unto for you, or keep yourself. For her alone, as long as you both shall live. And then we all say, I do. But as soon as things get harsh, as soon as things get in trouble, you start looking the other way. Let me tell you something. The record is in heaven. Are you hearing me? The record is in heaven. Let me, let me close this one. Lord, I mean, he gives the introduction yet. I'm going to close on this one. Hebrews 13, 4, and I guess read really the last part. But homongous, sexual immorality person, and adulterous, that means voluntary sexual relations between a married person other than your spouse, God will judge. And in my closing, for this you know in Ephesians 5, 5, that no homeowners, no unclean person, no covetous, that means strong desire, any uh, strong desire after passion of the world, man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the, in the kingdom of Christ and of God. 
When you make up your mind to get married, either you stay married or stay single. I'm going to plug this one in for the singles. And single, let me tell you something. It is good. It is good that when you are single, because what happened? Let me tell you something. You don't have to go through no stress of a spouse. Let me say that again. When you are single, you don't have to go through the stress of a spouse. When you reach home, you push the key in the door and your house is quiet as you leave it. You take the key, you throw it upstairs wherever, ladder, ladder. You take your shoes off, you throw it off this way, throw the next one that way, and you go to your bed, and when you get up in the morning, it's still the same place. But when you're married, they'll ask you, why this hill? How does it get here? I'm tired of moving this. I'm tired of moving that. Why don't you be? I better close this. Lord, I... I think it's going to get better. It'll be good to go to review, to do some dead reckoning. Where did we go wrong? It's independence next week. We will see how we work that. Maybe it's good to sit down some time and talk. Some love to talk. Some don't. And what we see a parent do we duplicate, we duplicate it in our marriage. We do. I've never seen my mom and dad argue, argue, never, never. I never heard my mama call my daddy name, never. I've never heard my daddy call my mama name, never. My daddy was the one who was tall. He talked, talk, 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 talk. His name was James. They used to call him Jimmy. But my mom, but my mama was the quiet one. Let me look to see what the Bible said about quiet. But what I love with my mom and I didn't, and my daddy, but I didn't take it. And we were sharing and me, Pike and I would, we were talking about this uh, over the weeks and over the weeks gone. And I said, you know what? If I had take what my mom and my daddy was demonstrating to me financially, I would have been way, 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 way ahead. My daddy was an industrious man. He worked in the boat. My mama was, 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 was an industrious woman. She, 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 she was a maid dress. She made straw bags. She, uh, 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 she tended to the shop. She, we had a grocery store. She tended to the gas station. My daddy had a barber shop. And then, then you, what did he do? He take a, and then he had a, a fishing boat. And there's something my mama taught me. Though there was seems to be the upper class in Sims Long Island. 
And there came uh, an advertisement that they were going to start cleaning the school. And the commissioner knew my mom and, 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 and he said, uh, 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 when he publicized the, 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 the position, every, no one took it. They refused to take it. They say it's demeaning. So my mama went to the commission and said, Commissioner, I'll do it. Ms. Knows you'll do it. Say, I'll do it. It's an honest living. Though she plat, though she do, uh, uh, do straw, though she can sew, she has a shop to, uh, to maintain and to serve. She has a gas station to run, but yet, she said, nobody don't want it. I said, I'll do it. And that stayed with me more than any more uh, brother bike. And there's an opportunity came. How does it get to do better relationship with your spouse? I tell you now. And because of our attitude, and I saw it. When it was an opportunity for me to move the garbage from work, I took it on. They call me Sanford and Son. They asked me, You still digging up in the day? And the very one who asked me if I'm digging up in the dirt, the school, the daughter was about to take an exam and they refused to let her take the exam because they didn't pay the school fee. And who she had to ask to, to pay it so the daughter could take this. You know what I told her? I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for your daughter. Just remember that. And now they don't call me Sanford and Son no more. And everybody want to work with us, Brother Pike. Am I ever telling the truth, Brother Pike? What I got to do? Better relationship. She get the benefit of spending the money. She get the benefit of riding in a Cadillac. She get the benefit of living in a house with no mortgage. She gets the benefit. God provide to be able not one night to go sleep with no food to eat. Hello, somebody. She gets the benefit to be able to go on vacation. Right now we can go, we can leave home and go to the US and spend three solid months without coming back home. Three months without coming back home. What have I got to do with the relationship? Plenty, thank you, sister. When you decide to make God your choice, when you decide to live a life with integrity, don't care what nobody say. Don't care what they think. God will work for you. God will work it out. I wanted a 52 foot boat. I used to preach about it. How much time I preach about it? How much time I preach about it? 52 foot Hatteras. Didn't God provide one? With no mortgage. 
We don't owe one dime in this world to a bank or nobody. That's why I love to have the church without a mortgage. Not boasting, not bragging. And as you go, I'm going to share it with you. And the reason why I don't share it, because a lot of people say, oh, he think he does, and he think he that. No, 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 no. You know what I think? I think I'm a child of the king. And if I live according to his word, and I do what he say, I can call him father. Tell you too much in one day. But as we go, we will see. I'm going to ask all the men to stand. Especially if you're married. If you're not married, still stand. We are the ones whom God is holding accountable. And I'm going to show you from the word. For our wives and our children. And then on top of that, he expanded the responsibility to take care of his church. If you can't take care of your wife and you can't take care of your children, how are you going to take care of God of his? See, this is no joke. I take this very serious. This walk with the Lord, I take very serious. And I thank God for those mentors, Pastor Young, Pastor Poitier, who mentored me before they leave. And I'm trying to mentor other men, young men. So when I'm gone, they do the same. They call me sissy, yeah, they call me sissy. You've called me funny, yeah, they call me funny. Why? Because I refuse to defile my bed. Well, you ain't no man. Say what you say. What God say, I'm his child. If you and mine go take care of your children, God have us responsible. Responsible. And I'm going to show you from the genesis of time right down to the time oh my god it is written exactly in the new testament what adam said in the old testament adam said in reference to eve and it's written in the new testament christ said about his church So we can't play with God's church. It's his business. The burden is on us. The burden, brothers, is on us. Paul said, husband, loves your, love your wife as Christ loved the church. You never see where Paul say, wife, love your husband. Show me. Burden is on us, our shoulder, our shoulder. From the word we're going to show you as we go. She may act a little funny, carrying all the ways, but still it's our responsible, responsibility to 
ring that marriage under God's command. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these men who are standing here According to the genesis of time, you made them male first. Then, Father, you said out of your mouth, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a help meet. That is compatible for him. So Lord, you made woman. You made a female. So God, be your will, you bring us back as we exegete your word. That we men may see the responsibility that you as our Father rest upon our shoulders. The same way you rested the responsibility on Christ's shoulder. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Father, help us today. To be that man who will take the lead, who will stand up for righteousness, stand up for truth, stand up for holiness. Because you said, Lord, holiness without no man shall see the Lord. God help us today. Help us today as iron sharpens iron. I pray for every one of my brothers, including myself. I pray for even the ones, Lord, that is, have not yet taken on a spouse. That they too may learn and hear what you have to say. These favors they ask in no other name. But in Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen.